Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. Johanan Dujor's Algas Organics is on the verge of a major breakthrough in the U.S. market. Wasco pumps the message of conservation and sustainable use ahead of World Water Day. The St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union celebrates its achievements. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle of Lyon. The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs has congratulated St. Lucian youth entrepreneur Johannan Dujor, owner of Algas Organics, for receiving the 2019 Commonwealth Youth Award. Dujor was among four young entrepreneurs and the only Caribbean national who obtained the coveted award on March 13, 2019. His company, Algas Organics, converts sargassum seaweed into biofertilizers and household chemicals, abating the detrimental effect of the seaweed's hydrogen sulfide emissions. During the last few months, Algas's plant tonic has garnered heightened interest in the regional and international markets, particularly the U.S. Export St. Lucia has been assisting Dujo in breaking through the U.S. market. Sunita Daniel is the chief executive officer. We spoke to some members of the Miami Chamber of Commerce who have agreed to look at using Mr. Dujon's um, natural um, product at baseball fields, and you would understand where the grass comes in in baseball fields, but also for us to look at using them on golf courses at, um, in Miami. So that's really important for us. Meanwhile, as successful as Algas Organics has been in its operations, the company on its own does not have the full capacity to eradicate the sargassum invasion along local shores. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney says a coordinated regional approach is needed to combat the problem. Over the years, the sargassum seaweed has been making its way to the Caribbean from the Sargasso Sea, causing great expenses to governments in the region. While the species is not harmful to humans, its removal is time-consuming, expensive, and can damage the beaches. Incoming rafts smother sea grasses and coral reefs, while fisher folk struggle to get in the water, as the sargassum also tangles up their motors, engines, nets, and lines. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney indicated that despite the best efforts of Algas Organics, the invasion of the sargassum seaweed remains a perennial issue. In Martinique, some of the coastal communities on the Atlantic side are actually considering moving. That's how serious it's gotten. Um, this is a huge cost to our countries. Notwithstanding the success of Mr. Dujon, I want to again congratulate him um, on winning the Commonwealth Youth Award for this region. I think that's for Canada and the Caribbean. Um, that his project still is not in an advanced stage that it's going to be able to deal with this project, this problem in its entirety. The invasive seaweed has been successfully utilized by Algas Organics to make fertilizer, but the Prime Minister explained that this is not enough to rid the region of the species. Prime Minister Chastney disclosed that a regional approach is required. However, he lamented that it appears the situation will worsen before it improves. So we're seeing that with the continuation of global warming, the amount of sagassum that's detaching itself from the sagassum sea and making its way down to Brazil. And when it gets to Brazil, the phosphates from the Amazon River are enriching um, the sagassum, and so it's becoming a new uh, entity in itself when it starts coming up our coast, and it's much, in, much more enriched. Um, and obviously you can see it's uh, thousands and thousands of acres of sagassum is making its way up from Brazil to the rest of the coast. So it's something that's collectively affecting us. The Prime Minister described the invasion of a species as a crisis requiring urgent attention. The commitment of the government of St. Lucia to the overall development of public sector workers and agencies is unwavering. Minister for Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, Senator Honorable Herman Gill Francis, says this is evident through provisions that have been made for the St. Lucia Fire Service over the last two years. We have employed 80 fire officers, 50 officers have been promoted, including have actually making a, a fire chief and a deputy. 
if you remember the impasse in 2014 after the Commission of Inquiry, there was a hiatus and four years we had an acting fire chief. We have corrected that. We have an actual fire chief now and a deputy. Several officers have received specialized training both locally and overseas. Unprecedented. Never before has that number of officers been able to go overseas and trade in. All stations have been renovated and safety procedures have been enhanced. Minister Francis says critical attention is being paid to the development of structure for the fire service as recommended by a 2014 survey report. Like one, that we should have a commissioner for the fire service. Cabinet men and cabinet said no, we didn't agree with that. They also said that um, we needed to make the fire service an essential, uh, an essential service. We are looking at the pros and cons of doing that. But if you are an essential service, then you have the opportunity to, to go on strike. You give notice, you have your 21 days or 7 days notice, and you go on strike. But if we remove you from the protective services and put you under essential services, how does the protective services act assist you? If you get injured, you lose a, a, a limb, you lose an eye, where are you going to be covered? So we don't just say things, you have to think through some of the things that we ask for. And that is why we actually put you under the protective services so that we will take special care of you in that area. Senator Herman Gil Francis says he is also keen on ensuring gender parity in the promotions process. The Water and Sewage Company Incorporated Wasco joins the international community in the annual observance of World Water Day on Friday, March 22, 2019. For Wasco, the key message this year is the conservation and sustainable use of water in the workplace and at home. Here's Anisia Antoine. In commemoration of World Water Day, the Water and Sewage Company, WASCO, in collaboration with the Caribbean Water and Sewage Association, hosted a panel discussion focusing attention on the importance of water. The day is being celebrated under the theme, Leaving No One Behind, a concept of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Jason Ernest is the acting director of the Water Resources Management Agency. Um, there are eight targets in SDG 6. And uh, one of those targets um, I should point on is the um, integrated water resource um, management. And uh, this is what we as an agency we're currently pushing because we're working with all the sectors, all partners, because we realize that water is a finite resource and there are many players that uh, look to access that water. And uh, in our vision is basically looking at uh, using that water in an equitable and sustainable manner. 85% of St. Lucian households have access to clean drinking water. Jim King, Water Service Manager of Wasco, stated that the country is on target with the goals of the United Nations. To achieve that, Wasco has embarked on many different projects um, in the different communities. No community has been left out, from bringing water down to the community of Bhutto in Sufre, to actually increasing the size of our lines within the Rodney Bay area. To, um, we have embarked on projects around the island and some of the projects are actually ongoing and some to start in the near future. Water World Day is annually celebrated on March 22nd. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney will travel to Florida for a meeting with U.S. President Donald J. Trump on March 22, 2019. The Prime Minister welcomes the opportunity for dialogue on deepening the relationship between the Caribbean and the United States. Specific areas of the Prime Minister's focus will be security, energy and expanding trade and investment opportunities. This is NTN Nightly, coming up the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. For effective chemical treatment of black cigatoka, practice routine preventative maintenance of all tools and equipment, especially the mist blower, to ensure proper functioning. Clean sprayer after use and service the machine regularly as recommended by the manufacturer. Whenever you are using pesticides to control black cigatoka disease, personal protection and safety measures must be followed. Spray operators must always wear proper protective gear. Before or when handling pesticides, put on your overalls, respirator, goggles, boots, 
and gloves to avoid contact with the skin, inhalation and ingestion of pesticides. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoga on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoga Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894 or email bpmu at cendw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien of your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. Close to 600 athletes from 10 schools participated as Southern qualifiers were completed Tuesday as the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports gets the preliminaries held before the semi-finals and finals of the annual Inter-Secondary Schools Track and Field Championship. And that comes off at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground next week. Competitors came from the V4 Comprehensive, Beanfield Comprehensive, Trizel Secondary, Soufre Comprehensive, PI Secondary, Angier Secondary, Granivier Secondary, Stanley John Odlum Secondary, Miku Secondary, and Clendon Mason Secondary. They competed in both track and field events, including 100, 200, 300, 400, 800, 1200, and 1500 meter events. Discus, Javelin, Shot Put, Long Jump and High Jump. Northern Schools qualifiers will be held at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground Thursday and Friday. With a pole vault program currently being undertaken here to revitalize the event, we take a look at some of the island's history as it relates to pole vaulting. From the late 1990s to the late 2000s, Dominic Johnson represented St. Lucia at numerous world-class events including three Olympic Games. From 2009 to 2014, four young St. Lucian men represented the nation at the Carifta Games, earning six medals, including two gold medals. Two of these young men went on to university scholarships. Rick Valsen from Groselle Secondary won an NCAA Division III National Championship in 2014, while also representing St. Lucia at the Commonwealth and Pan American Games. Mickey Ferdinand of Miku Secondary eventually combined his pole vault abilities with the high jump and is now enrolled in a scholarship at Texas A&M University. With the inclusion of the boys and girls pole vault in the secondary schools championships, boys and girls will have an opportunity to learn a new and unique sport that has a history of success for St. Lucia while striving to represent their schools at the national level, an opportunity that has not existed in decades. With facilities in the north and south of the island and plans for new national and regional clinics to be hosted over the next two years, the sport has never been in a better position to provide opportunity for our youth. The series of clinics in 2019 and a similar pattern of clinics in 2020 will lead the way towards the establishment of a formalized avenue for school sports and provide an opportunity for success for youth around the island. And as we close, let me just inform you that the offices of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be closed Thursday and Friday to facilitate some air quality improvement works there. But staff will however be based at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground to assist with the execution of the Northern Qualifiers. If there is an urgent need to have a matter addressed, you can access staff members at that location. I'm O'Brien. That's your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union celebrated the achievements of staff for their long-standing service and outstanding performance at end of year 2018. The company's annual awards ceremony was held last week at the St. James Club, Morgan Bay. We have more in this report. When it came to identifying the individuals who went above and beyond the call of duty, the Board of Directors and Management of the St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union left no stone unturned. Over 15 of its members received awards yesterday for playing a key role in the company's growth and development over the last financial year. President of the Board of Directors, Zephyrin Francis, expressed his immense pride in the accomplishments of his fellow members and offered a few words of encouragement for maintaining the standards and even setting higher ones for the company. Today is your day. 
Some will shine more than others, but remember, you all are part of it. Um, the award ceremony today is just a start of many things to come. It's a way of saying thank you. We are here today to be part of your celebration. We are here to commend you. Awards were presented to members for their outstanding performance in at least five different categories, including Team Member of the Year, Employee of the Year, and Teller and Loans Officer of the Year. Some awardees were selected by the employees themselves. Receiving the award, I was totally happy. Um, also for the other awardees, I'm, uh, I'm happy for them. And um, I hope they continue to do good in their work so they can get another award in the other year. Well, it feels good. As I'm fairly surprised. Um, I wasn't expecting an award. And um, it was a pleasant surprise. The company also took the opportunity to say a proper farewell to one of its longest serving members who recently retired. It's a, a, a good place to work and it's a good um, environment. The, 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 the heads, they, they're treating you good. They, they laugh with you, they'll crack jokes with you. They'll, because I myself, I was, in, I was a custodian and then I got the training. I was very, I did not want that at, at the beginning, but. I, I, in going, you know, I, I appreciated that. Treasurer of the Credit Union, Ivor Daniel, closed the ceremony by commending staff once again for contributing to the satisfactory numbers published in the company's annual financial statements. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au temps général. Monsieur, Madame, département qui nous responsabilité pour information en gouvernement de cette à CGIS, à ce que télévision nationale PIA, NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Créole, présente au Primus Hutchinson. Durant la session, le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney et puis les membres médias pour ce moment il a annoncé attention pour encourager les autres membres de ce pays Caribla, à ce que la Guadeloupe et Martinique qui ont trouvé les membres association pour faire un compte et puis le président de France, M. Emmanuel Macron, pour discuter des marches qui ont pris à ces pays-là concernant le paiement de taxes sur les gros business de pays. M. Chasse a déclaré qu'il a si joué pour les autres cités pays avec l'autre pays où il pour approcher le président Martinique et Guadeloupe pour faire un arrangement pour nous avec pour tenir en tête à tête. Et puis M. Macron, comme France, c'est un de ces pays qui a poussé à faire ça. Il y a un autre sujet qui, le Premier ministre, parlait de ces problèmes ou à ouet en la mer ou Selon M. Chasney, malgré les jeunes garçons, ça c'est Johan en douze ans, j'ai fait très bien en succès pour servir ou à ouet là en affaires agricoles. Il n'y a pas assez pour adresser ces quantités avec la longue ou à ouet qui a entré en la mer Caribla. M. Douze ans, oui, c'est un grand prix pour l'invention pour tourner ou à ouet. Quand on a un naturel, pour raison de ça, l'Angleterre a placé une ambassade de jeunesse pour ces pays comme le là un résultat pour ça. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré qu'il a coûté ces pays en pile de dépenses pour faire bataille contre Huawei, qui a menacé la mer et le gouvernement de ces pays caribes. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a aussi répondu à la question de la projection qui a été faite pour l'année. M. Chasney 
avoir la vérité qui ni ministère et ministère des finances pas ni contrôle de rapport qui a sorti haut département statistiques mais pour mettre qui y ont mes estimations qui fait du représentation budget qui a trouvé présenté le 8 mars côté gouverneur général là qui a adressé les membres du parlement à qui consiste exécution qui a continué immédiatement semaine après mais on a premier ministre là déclaré qui estimation qui a montré un bon encouragement Invest and Lusher a fait un annoncement qui a développé plusieurs terrains pour bâtir des terrains de résidents. En parmi ces terrains, à peu près 11 acteurs en bois champ micro et à peu près 5 acteurs en bois joli en des nuits. Selon l'officier exécutif pour la compagnie Sala, M. Roderick Sherry, le développement Sala qui a été coûté en bois champ et en bois joli, c'est un choix à donner un grand programme de développement pour 59 terrains en bois champ et 25 en bois joli. Si l'on investe dans le champ, ces terrains là qui ont servi en deux façons. Ça veut dire que la caïni terrain pour servir seulement pour les résidents et l'autre pour affaires commerciales, ça veut dire pour produire business. Ces terrains ont un de 4 000 pieds carrés pour juste 12 000 pieds carrés et qui ont été là pour les gens qui résident à ces communes. Là. Selon Jéré, qui est-ce que ça pour ménager ces diverses terrains en compagnie de David Desi il y a présenté une proposition pour l'autorité qui est ça pour contrôler le développement du pays et aussi annoncé que ce projet est raisonnable assez pour le monde pour l'avantage. Organisation pour un bon service en façon coup de main et l'autre manière comme ça. Il y a un grand spectacle en vieux fort le 7 avril à sous avance pour Philippe Marcin, ça a été fait en collaboration et puis en organisation sociale pour le développement de jeunesse à ces pays caribes. là. Malgré l'activité groupe ça a été pour un coup en choisir l'année passée, plan l'année ça c'est pour une activité en tout petit court à cette ci Pour raison ça toutes ces différents gains pour un bon service en pays à Kakouya sur toute l'école, l'église, l'organisation, le secteur privé et public pour sortir dehors et participer et puis pour faire initier tout ça là, il y a un grand succès. C'est même là qu'a fait un appel comme qui a comme il a célébré, observé le 40 e anniversaire de Padas pour suivre le thème là, nous tous adhérer ensemble pour simer une bonne nouvelle et aider il y en a l'autre et ça qui n'est pas pour payer cette ici ça va venir en meilleure place pour vivre. Il y a un annoncement déjà fait pour faire public la SAV qui est division qui a offert service de santé pour public là en ville de Gozile, déjà fermé depuis mercredi pour juste le 26 mars. Alors, service ça là qui était available normalement en département ça là, qui a été fait à présent en urgent care unit là. Euh, changement ça là nécessaire pour faire possible pour faire un nettoyage en place là. Il y a demandé aussi pour mon noter, moi je mange à fait pour service spécial pour mon qui ni pour acheter d'ailleurs avec sa caille un wellness center là là que j'ai dit le 12 mars ça c'est mon qui n'est l'habitude de trouver service à la en polyclinique là en gosile si vous n'avez besoin plus d'informations vous avez téléphoné pour les cliniques là en limo 460 96 6 et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé nouvelle là pour aujourd'hui, je vous remercie autant pour garder mon cabaret en invitation. Pour je ne puis moins considérer qu'on se fait la vie d'un gars pour cette autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, nous avons vu pour Chanel. Merci à Peel Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Low-level shallow clouds drifting with this wind flow will bring a few showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.34 p.m. and will be low again at 9.30 p.m. The tide for VFO Bay was high at 4.41 p.m. and will be low again at 10.57 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.07 a.m. That brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.